Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be just, just going over really quickly how to export your SolidWorks files into Adobe Illustrator for use on a laser cutter. Now you, we're going to be working specifically with Universal Laser Systems um, laser cutter on this one, but I'm fairly certain that this method can work for pretty much any laser if you have one, whether or not it's an epilogue, uh, Trotec or whatnot, or maybe even a Glowforge. Honestly, this would work as well. All we're going to be doing today is figuring out how we're going to take these surfaces and export them as DXF files. And also telling you some of the little tips and tricks that I've learned along the way to just make your life easier as you're exporting these files. So, first thing you're going to notice right here is that it looks like I'm in an assembly right now. I am not in an assembly. Before you do anything, you need to realize that you can't export DXF files in an assembly. You need to be in a part. So, for example, if I was in an assembly and I wanted to export this surface, I'd come over to the side and I'd find the part and I would export, I'm sorry, I would open that part in its own folder and then I would export to the DXF. So, how exactly do we export to DXF? Well, the answer is pretty simple. You just click on the surface that you want to export, go down, right click, and then go down here to export DXF slash DWG and click on it. Now you're just going to want to go and find a place to put it. Um, I'm just going to put my name as Jewelry Box Cabinet 2 and hit enter as a DXF. So now over here on the left side, we're going to have this output over here. And you're going to want to um, select faces, loops, and edges. Now when this is selected, you can select any face you want as long as it's on the same relative plane. So for example, I can't select this surface or else it will tell me they're not planar. However, I can select this surface, this surface, and this surface. An interesting thing to note as well is SOLIDWORKS will take this image. So if you're going to be exporting DXF files, it will take just this and export it. So if I wanted to export this surface as well, if I click this, you'll notice something when I pull up the DXF viewer is that it doesn't work. There's just one of them. And unfortunately, it's not that great. Ugh, okay, we're fine. So you notice that it's only done one of them. So you can only do the surfaces. You, you can only you can only do things. Um, I, I sorry, export the DXFs from the angle you're looking at. So all you need to do right now is you can even hit remove entities if you wanted to, um, and you can hit save. And that will then save these. As that prop as the DXF file and I can go over to the folder where all of these where I saved my DXF file in and if I open it up it'll open up in I think for my computer it's going to be using eDrawings so now you can see over here we have exactly just that kabam this is wonderful okay so, now that we have our DXF drawing, what we're going to be wanting to do, we'll close out of that real quick, we're going to want to find our folder. So I just have that over here, my other monitor. Um, if, pro tip, by the way, if you're doing SolidWorks, two monitors is a really good thing to use. Um, I highly recommend it. It's recommended for the certifications, which I'll be going over sometime soon and I mean everything in between. So we're just going to go down here to Illustrator and the easiest way that I've found to do this is to simply just click on what you're exporting, click it and then drag it in. So it's going to take a little bit because it's kind of Kind of weird that way. Okay, so now you click on Illustrator because the window comes up in the corner. Right. Make sure that it's scaled correctly and that your units are whatever you're using. 
If you're going to be laser cutting, this is very important. If you're just using your drawings for drawing, then sure, you can import it as whatever you want to. But if you're going to be laser cutting, you really need to know what you're doing it as, uh, what, what your unit of measurement is. So if you're using inches on your part, use inches. And how do you check that? You come down here and see whether or not you're using inches, millimeters, centimeters, meters. Down here, you'll check that. Make sure you're using Make sure what you're using and then come into here. I'm using inches, so I'm going to select inches and that one unit equals one inch. Okay. And it's good. We'll click OK. Now it's going to pop up this message saying that the font is not found in the system and that the text is going to be all weird. You don't want the text anyway. So now we have it right here. My board is set up to... Um, the laser cutter that I use, which is a 18 by 32 inch bed. And I'm just going to come over here to the text and just simply highlight and then delete it. And now we see over here that we have our drawing in. That's nice. Now I'm going to test a theory. Okay. No, nope, fear is not proven. So my, my theory was my theory was that because we exported the multiple faces, the theory was that when I exported them or output them as a DXF file, that they would split lines or share lines. And I do not think that ended up being the case. We'll just test again. Oh, oh, I think it's actually true. So as you can as you can see right here, there was some shared lines. For example, this was this was shared. So on your laser cutter, if you have shared lines, uh, if, if, imagine if this was if this was back right here, what it would do is as the laser cutter is going, it will cut here, do its thing, and then it'll go again, thinking it's cutting a new line. So you have to take that old line and delete it just so that it will go over it once. Now that's also a good tactic if you want it to go over it multiple times without having to actually get into the system, reset the print every single, or the cut every single time. You could just layer a whole bunch of copies of it over each other and you'll have multiple, I don't know, you'll have the, a laser that will go over it multiple times. Once you get to this point right here, you're going to notice that in the corner over here, I have some colors. This is really important um, if you're, to use with laser cutters. So as you know, some of the la if you're familiar with lasers, you'll know that the way they organize their layers is by color. Oops, sorry, I just had it. Um, the way they organize their layers is by color. So what you're going to want to do is figure out what layers you're, you want done in order, in, in what order. So for me personally, I like starting with red. Red's just the setting we all use on the laser. Um, it's generally really nice and I use black for rasterizing because black can actually be interpreted as multiple shades of black. So there's grays, there's different types of grays and um, also redundant color, I, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> um, there's also uh, magenta, orange, yellow, blue, cyan. It, it just gets kind of weird and there's these dis different layers that you can, organ that you can um, organize how you want the laser to go around your part. So if I wanted to, I could have these inner parts cut out first. So I'll put paint them like that and then I'll have the outer parts, whoops, I made a mistake. So I'll do all of that in red so that they do that last. And then I'll take these inner parts and paint them as cyan or not cyan, <laughs> the magenta color or the pink color. That way, however, I organize it in the laser settings, which is really dependent on your laser in universal. What you'll do is you'll organize them before you hit the print button in your setup menu. That way you can go through, click on the color 
shift it up or shift it down and you can organize how you want each layer to be done or in what order, organize the power, set all these types of things, that'll be good. Now we're not done. We just have a couple more small steps before we can start laser cutting. So we want to go up here to the top and we're going to want to change the point to 0 0.01. You can see the part is pretty much invisible now. Illustrator and Corel Draw are different in the fact that in Corel, if you select a tiny point or the uh, a tiny stroke weight, that you can still see it as if it's really heavy. However, in photo, uh, sorry, in Illustrator, it's meant to cater to a more artistic community, which isn't a bad thing. That's a great thing, but unfortunately, you don't really get to see what you're going to be cutting. After that, you just save as there. Um, if you want to open a file at, in a Corel Draw, all you have to do is save as and then um, save it as an EPS file, which is fine. Then after that, you just click Control P, and I don't ha I don't have the laser hooked up to this laptop, or else I would show you. But after that, you hit Control P on your computer, and then. All you're going to want to do then is just go down to your suggested printers and your laser will be there. The one that we use is the PLD 6.150 or is it PLS? PLS 6.150 D by Universal. So you'll select that, you'll go to your printer settings, set up, select the different layers you want. And then boom, you'll have your product. All right, I hope you've liked this video, guys. If this video helped you and if you liked it, please give it a like. Maybe think of subscribing as I come up with some more SolidWorks stuff. And also, there's a shameless plug, but in the description, I'll include a link to a YouTube channel that I'm also on where I'm doing a podcast and a Dungeons & Dragons series. And I'm also in several of the skits that they're doing. And I'm kind of a little bit of a videographer in them. This is Multiverse Productions. We do a lot of fun stuff with uh, basically my friend group. It was all started by my friend McKay, and he tells an awesome story about worlds of McKay's. I just say go check it out. It's, it'll be a lot of fun. You won't regret it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and you know what? Have, have a wonderful night.